Grammy Award-winning record producer Warren Heward recently published his new book, Home Studio Recording the Complete Guide, and in this video I'm going to share five lessons that I learned after reading it. Quick disclaimer though, there's just so much information to unpack in this book, and so there's no way I can make just one video covering everything, so if you want to dive in deeper, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Lesson number one, commercial studios are no longer the standard. Back in the day, the only way that artists could have access to recording equipment would be by booking commercial studios which had tape machines and recording consoles. Fast forward many decades later today, pretty much anybody can get started recording from their bedroom as long as you have a laptop, some sort of recording software, an audio interface, an inexpensive microphone, and a pair of headphones. And if you don't believe me, look up Billie Eilish and her brother Phineas. They won a Grammy over an album that was completely recorded from their bedroom. Phineas has even made a video giving a tour of that exact bedroom and this is what the thumbnail looks like. However, this book is not saying that you shouldn't go to a commercial studio or that you shouldn't invest that kind of money in your recordings. Because ultimately, it really depends on your needs. And I can only speak from personal experience, the first time that I actually set foot on a professional studio, our band at the time recorded literally everything from the drums to the guitars, bass, and vocals, and that cost us over eight grand to do a five song EP. Fast forward to my college years, I was part of a different band, and then we did have some audio equipment at home, so we were able to record pretty much everything except drums, and then we just rented out the studio space specifically for the drums, and we saved a ton of money. So our commercial studios nice? Yes. Do they have really awesome gear? Absolutely. Should you go to one? It really depends depends on your needs, but it is no longer a requirement. Lesson number two, define your needs and goals. Before you even think about spending money on any equipment, it is highly encouraged that you think about what kind of music and artists you're planning to record. Will you be recording yourself, a singer-songwriter, a band, or a combination? The reason why this is so important to define right at the start is because the gear you'll need may drastically change depending on your goals. For example, if you're primarily going to be recording singer-songwriters, chances are you're not going to need an audio interface with more than two channels. One of the inputs will be used to record vocals and then the other one whatever instrument that songwriter plays. So if you were to go out and buy a four or eight channel interface, pretty much all of the remaining channels would be just dusting away when you could have used that extra money to buy a better microphone or some other piece of equipment. The opposite may also apply. If your main goal is to record entire bands or mic a drum kit, then you will need additional channels and you should just skip a two channel interface altogether. Lesson number three, analog versus in the box. When we talk about analog, that means the physical pieces of gear such as external preamps, compressors, EQs, and even amplifiers versus in the box, which means recording from your computer using plug-in emulations of that analog gear. Of course, there are pros and cons to both. With analog gear, it is the most authentic original sound you're going to get. However, as you can imagine, it can be pretty expensive, not to mention it takes a lot of room, some of these pieces may be hard to find, and if something breaks, the repair costs are not cheap. But if you've been watching my channel for a while, you probably know that I'm a huge fan of both recording and mixing completely in the box. I just love the flexibility and how convenient it is. That's why many years ago I decided to invest in an Apollo Twin which comes with awesome sounding plugins made by Universal Audio and ever since I've been using it in every single one of my productions including this YouTube channel. And I don't know about you but last time I heard my favorite song I never asked myself did they record that with the original? Original or was that the plug-in? Chances are nobody cares and you just love the music because it's a great song. But let me know down below what you think. Do you primarily record with analog gear or do you prefer to do everything in the box? Lesson number four, master your DAW. It really does not matter which DAW you use and everybody is going to have their own personal preference. Chances are, if you ever worked in a commercial studio, you're gonna lean towards Pro Tools. If you're somebody like me and you're all invested 
interested in the Apple ecosystem, then you're most likely gonna choose Logic Pro. And if you like electronic dance music or working with loops, then you're primarily gonna choose Ableton or FL Studio. But regardless of which one you choose, these are just tools used for the same purpose, which is to create awesome music. And the only thing that is important is for you to pick one, stick to it, and learn it inside out. This way, whenever inspiration strikes, your DAW is not gonna become a hurdle, but a tool used to help you capture that performance or that idea. Trust me, the number one session killer is you getting frustrated because you don't know why things aren't going the way you want them to in your DAW, and then you're just closing the session without recording anything. And by the way, if you're getting any value out of today's content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. The next lesson I learned is that the vocal is king. The best way to sell any song, regardless of genre or musical style, is through the vocal performance. And this is not meant to undermine the rest of the band members, but the best way to convey some sort of emotion and to get the message across is through the singer. And in the book, Warren really encourages us to create an environment in our studios that both enables and inspires to get the best performance out of any singer. So going forward, really think about how you can improve on your vocal productions. That could be anything from rearranging the room, installing some acoustic treatment, buying a better microphone, or even coming up with a custom vocal chain. And speaking of vocal chains, if you want to check out Warren's go-to vocal chain and how you can replicate it on a budget, then make sure to click on this video.